Okay. So, uh, today we are going to discuss the another topic uh, in communication skills and particularly communication in the within the classroom that is note sticking. So, this is also uh, a kind of a obvious thing a simple thing like listening and many time we miss the, uh, the great uh, opportunity can be available to us in terms of learning by paying attention to the some of the small and simple things like listening or like notes taking. So, we are going to again talk about the notes taking a simple thing, but it can be very valuable and at the same time it can also be a very value adding to the process of learning, thinking, memorizing or even innovating. In the due course we will look at there is a method of notes taking which can help us not only individual learning, but can also enhance group learning. So, we will take this process step by step and we start with a fact and uh, those who have had time to see the video, they know that we talked about why it is important to have uh, to take the notes. Uh, it is important to take notes because first and foremost it help us to uh, remain aware, remain awake, remain conscious and active in the classroom. Uh, it engages our mind. This is a, a helpful way to establish our connection with the material. Uh, once we have taken the notes, we establish a kind of a personal association, personal relationship with the, with the subject matter and that help us to quick, quickly recall whatever the interaction took place in the classroom. Instead of reading whole textbook, it is always more convenient to go through our notes to understand the basics and the nuances both about the subject matter being discussed in the class. Audio video recording is helpful, but that is definitely not the substitute for note sticking because again the audio video recording and watching the audio video recording is very very uh, passive method. Even while observing uh, video recordings, it is advisable to take notes. So, a first method we are going to discuss is called 5 R method. This has uh, uh, as the name suggests has 5 component record, reduce, recite, reflect and review. So, record means the simple whatever been transpired, whatever being discussed recording that. Uh, reducing it after the class we can summarize and we can summarize uh, some of the points in the margins. Then comes the recite means occasionally regularly maybe every week or every two week we have to go through the notes to keep our connections intact with the subject matter and the reflection thinking about the points. And this is one point about reflection about notes taking which goes on even after the class. Uh, so, this is active part after the class we can have many points emerging in our mind, we can have many ideas emerging based on those notes we can write down in, uh, in the same page and that further establishes our connection and strengthens our connection with the subject matter and uh, of course, the review. Uh, important thing in this uh, method is to divide the page in this way, wherein the major area uh, is dedicated to the notes taking area, where we record the material. Then uh, summarize is the reduce part, this part 2 of the this 5 hour method, which is called reduce is done in the, uh, it is recommended to be done. Uh, on the bottom of the page and at least dedicate 2 inches for that, which is the summary of the lecture. And uh, then comes the uh, another point like uh, reflect and recite and particularly for the reflect we have this side margin, we must keep the side margin that is a open space you may or may not write during the classroom in this space, but as we go on as mind works on these notes and that matter, uh, we keep getting some ideas about what can be done further, 
what, how it, uh, what are the questions we have in our mind about the subject matter, uh, how it can be useful in our academic life, in our daily life or to solve a problem, all these points can be recorded here. So, this method was first popularized in the Stanford University and this 5 hour method is, is being used for many years uh, to systematically uh, for taking the notes systematically. Now, we will move to a video and that will help us in uh, to practice this method. The, this video will be played, uh, this is a 7 minutes video and while this video is on, please practice this 5 hour method and I can uh, revise this 5 hour method again in this page looks like this, the main area is notes taking area, summary is uh, written on the bottom of the page and what points emerge, uh, what are the insights, what are my ideas after uh, going through this uh, lecture, the, it is a kind of a lecturate we will have this can be written in the Q column that is that column in this 5 hour method is called reflect. So, uh, this is the scheme and now we move to the video. So, was this video uh, visible? Could you hear? Could you listen? Yes sir, that video was good and uh, we know uh, the uh, 7 basic uh, missings of engineering field and uh, the video was clear. Okay. So, uh, now the task is to, were you all taking notes following that 5 hour method? If not, you might have taken this uh, uh, notes partially. So, I would request you to complete the notes uh, using the 5 hour method and that is my request and invitation to all the centers, uh, to all the participants and then we will okay. get back. Hello sir, how are you sir? I am Sairam, Sairam. who came there. How are you sir? I am fine, how are you? I am fine sir and uh, things are 5 hour method I was telling about the things which you are already in the start in this and they are following it. Thanks very much for this update, this is time for a little practice. So, uh, all the participants are requested to complete their notes using 5 hour method and then, then we will move to the another method and then we will have another uh, practice session uh, in a short while. So, and we, now we are moving to the next center. Good morning sir. Good morning. Sir, we have completed the notes with the 5 hour method. Okay. So, can some of you share your experience? Was it useful? Uh, does the quality of our notes, uh, did that improve the quality of our notes? Yes sir, it does. Actually, uh, not just taking down the notes, but it will be useful when we uh, start compiling the notes and uh, start making our own uh, text. That will be much useful at that time. Yes. So, thanks very much. We will get back uh, in a short while again with another method. Meanwhile, we can talk to some other, at least one other center. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. These 5 hour methods record, reduce, recite and reflect review. Yes. Helps us to record at the same time, it helps us to uh, recall. If we stop uh, taking the notes, we will not recall it again. When we are following this 5 hour, it, it would be highly helpful for us. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much. Now, we will look at uh, another method of notes taking, uh, which according to definition can also be uh, called whole brain notes taking. Uh, some of you might remember that uh, in the video or, or in the last class, we talked about the mind map and mind map is basically a whole brain method. Whole brain method means not only we have to use analytical capability, but we also have to use the creative faculty of our mind to create a holistic notes. So, this is a, by definition is a graphical method of taking notes. Uh, generally, it takes a hierarchical or T branch format with ideas branching into their subsection and mind map allows a greater creativity 
when recording ideas and information. So, I will share uh, one example of mind map front of you and you can have a look at it. This is the very recent topic even today the uh, some um, major global conference is going on uh, in Paris about climate change and uh, this mind map is about the climate change and impact of the rising temperature. Please have a look at this. This is also a, a, a method of taking notes. So, first have a look at it and then we will go into the science and art behind uh, taking notes in this format. So, you can see there are some branches coming out of the uh, central theme which is impact of the rising temperature. Then these branches are related to prediction for the 100 years, scene looks like a very depressing, the global warming and how worse the global warming is comparing to other crisis this civilization has faced and uh, economics of the global warming all these are the main branches and connected to those main branches are there are sub branches and uh, lot of colors and graphics is used here. This whole concept could be also could be presented in a form of a one page article. What is more interesting the one page article uh, with the 250 words or 300 words or 500 words or this mind map. So, can we have a quick poll what method of recording the notes seems more interesting and engaging step by step writing in paragraphs and seconds making mind map. So, we have just initiated a small poll uh, what method of notes taking seems to be more interesting and engaging. I think 70, 80 people have responded, 83 people and most of them have said that mind map looks like a more interesting and engaging way of, uh, of taking notes. So, uh, this trend is continuing, we, we can see that uh, on a same theme a mind map could be given and a write up could be given. What seems to be more interesting and more inviting and more engaging for learners is a mind map. Why it is so? Because our brain wants to work in a wholesome way. Colors, diagram, pictures, they strike, they sensitize many of more than one senses of ours, colors and diagrams. So, now we will look at the science behind this method. The man who popularized this method is uh, uh, his name is Tony Buzan. This is the resume of Tony Buzan. You can see that you must have seen so many biodata. They look very monotonous if they are when they are presented in a conventional form. So, this man who popularized the mind map has created his resume like this again in the form of mind map and that looks like more inviting because it captures the uh, versatility of the personality of this person in a more engaging way. So, he is an author, an educator, an advisor, is a media personality, um, he works on intelligence and creativity, there are some great achievements to his credit, he has also developed a software I mind map and in a short while I will give you the link, uh, you can go to that link and get to know more about this method and uh, you can see some of the amazing mind maps uh, being uh, put up and then you can also learn how to use the software to generate mind map of on the themes of your choice. So, there are certain things about the mind map. Number one it starts with the center point and they advise that center point should not be only words, but it should have some image because image uh, word limits our thinking whereas, image provoke our thinking and provoke our imagination. So, whatever is the area or topic you want to make mind map upon 
identify some picture, think about a picture, think about an image and put it up in the center of the page, not on the corner of the page, but center of the page. So, when we put this thing in the center of the page, it makes the whole page available and uh, this simple act gives signal to our brain that we can think in all directions. When we put a first word in the one corner, it gives us a message to our subconscious mind that we have to think in a linear pattern in a step by step manner. Whereas, when we put a word in the center of the page, our subconscious mind receives the uh, message that the whole page is available and we can think in all possible directions. So, first step is to write down the image, uh, uh, write down the topic reflected and represented as an image. Then uh, branches are called out, branches as you can see need not to be actually should not to be straight lines, they should be curved lines and the length of branch should be equal to this length of the word. Uh, and throughout this process we can use different colors, uh, because colors uh, engage our brain better uh, with the content. So, uh, uh, structure, if you look at the structure, you can see that there is a uh, the main branch and connected to the main branch there are sub branches. So, uh, related this is a mind map of the mind map. So, you can see that in structure should be clear, it can be in order and the main branch starts with the main point and then it is sub branched which are related to the sub points of the that main main point. Then we also see the lines, words, pictures and colors. So, these are the methods, uh, these are the some basic uh, things about uh, making mind map. Now, I will request uh, to identify the one theme and uh, uh, since we watched this video and all of you are from the engineering colleges, you can make the uh, this video which, which we just observe as your basis for making mind map, engineering education and uh, the missing points in engineering education. So, instead of uh, you can also choose instead of writing missing points, you can just write management education and you can identify the seven possibilities. Instead of the missing points, we can also write in a positive terms like seven possibilities. Possibility uh, of asking questions, uh, synthesizing, uh, representing, conceptualizing, uh, connecting it to the real world. So, you can make the central point first and draw the major branches coming out of that center point. And uh, I hope some uh, many of you would have brought, I requested to bring the A3 size page and colored pencils or uh, sketch pens. So, you can start this work and then once you start the work gradually we will start seeing the signs behind this method. So, we can go to some uh, centers. Hello sir. Hello. Good morning. Very good morning sir. So, is the instruction. How are you sir? I am fine. How are you? I am fine sir. Cheshu from Vidya Vigas uh, coordinator sir. Yes. Uh, thanks very much for connecting. And uh, can you, uh, is the instruction clear? We need to start the uh, making mind map on the video which we just watched. Is the instruction clear? Yes, sir. You have given seven failures now, in that the fourth one that you have given is decompose. Yes. What is decompose? Can I get that explanation for that clearly? Because I'm, I can't understand that. Uh, once we have understood the problem, so, Descartes method says that we should be able to break down the problem in a smaller uh, parts. So, that is the decompose. Sir, so the task given to us is we have to make in mind map the video that we just saw showing these seven basic missing points of engineering. We have to show that in mind map with images and colors with the branches. Okay, so this is a practice time. Uh, you can. I'll advise to work in the 
pair or in the group of three. So, you uh, in next 10 minutes you need to spend on making the mind map on this missing points of engineering education in pairs or in group of three. And meanwhile, if uh, anyone has had any question in any of the centers, we can take the questions. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Uh, good good morning. morning. We have a few. Uh, we we have a few queries regarding the note making. Yes. Uh, when you are talking about this mind map, can you use it in a classroom when you are teaching a student? Because it really looks like a difficult process to teach them how to do the mind map. But when you are using it for a review article, I think that is the best. So, what do you advise us when you are talking about teaching a student? Uh, my experience has been otherwise. I found that students find it much more interesting, they engage better, they find it fun filled and their thinking is provoked in the process of mind map. So, this can be used in the classroom very much. In fact, I have used the mind map as a question in the final exam and this is one of the ways I, uh, we have uh, been using this method to test the understanding of the subject of this among the student uh, through the mind map. So, uh, we have been using it in the classroom and it is uh, it is very very interesting many students invariably students have found it interesting. Generally, it is advisable to use the mind map after one chapter is over or one module is over. So, as but at the same time this method can also be used in the beginning of uh, some chapter because in the beginning we can give the main theme just introduction and ask the student what comes in their mind. What do you think the utility of this knowledge can be? What problems can be solved using this chapter or this topic? And that makes the student think forward. So, they become proactive in thinking. So, they identify their questions already and after that their interest will be more in the subject because now they have questions and a typical human tendency is if they have a question they would like to search for the answers. So, in fact I can show you one Facebook uh, link which I have kept it open of the mind map. I teach here a course on self awareness and relating with world. This is a compulsory course for the MBA first year students. And uh, one of the methods of uh, testing their understanding is through mind map. So, I can show you my Facebook group on which they have to upload the mind map. So, uh, you can see that there are 60 students in the class and uh, uh, all the students are uh, uh, clubbed, uh, all the students were uh, asked to make the Facebook group. And in the Facebook group, uh, they have to upload their mind map. So, for example, you can look at this mind map. So, since this class was on self awareness, uh, this is the starting point, the self is the starting point and uh, I used a little bit of yoga in the class. So, they have written, the one student has written that there are different sheath of our self, Annamaya Kosh, the physical self, the vital self, the psychological self and there is a self image uh, we have we carry and that is projected that is a reflection of our ability. There is a whole bunch of emotions we all have and emotions can be controlled can be uh, regulated through awareness and emotions can be directed towards high energy and high pleasantness. Uh, the, then there was a topic on time management. So, there is a structure how we structure time these are the ways we structure time and if we are conscious the time can be structured in a more fruitful way. You can see whole lot of story is captured in one single page. And uh, when I ask them to put up in the Facebook uh, that remain with them uh, always. So, they can always go back and since that is their creation they uh, would like to go back to that and that they have the personal connection with their output the artistic output. So, 
the recall will be better they can reminded of certain things which they learned in the course during the course whenever later on they look at it so our uh, experience is that this can be very useful in the classroom you have to try it to first uh, our teachers have to practice we all have to practice we need to start enjoying this process and then only we can make others enjoy the process uh, i can uh, sum up my answer by sharing one experience i used to take notes wherever uh, i would go to attend classes or seminar or conferences hoping that some day i'll go through these notes but very rarely i would go back to my notes because uh, they would not be so interesting and uh, i would not have that much time later on to go back to the notes so i kind of disappointed with my this habit of taking notes of course i used to take it in a normal manner uh, and i stopped taking notes i decided for couple of years that uh, i am not going to take any notes and uh, whatever remains in my mind that is fine because anyway i don't go back to my notes but a uh, few years back when i discovered this uh, method of mind mapping though i was taught about it uh, during the college but somehow i forgot and when i uh, i am reminded of this method i started enjoying taking the notes so my enjoyment of taking the notes has increased it, this is equally useful in the consulting assignments when you are sitting with the client and trying to understand the what is the problem what are the variables governing their problem uh, what are the interconnections in the organization which are causing the problem which can be uh, the source of potential solution so all that started happening when i started using the mind map and now for even the old notes which are taken in the form of mind map i like going back and every time i go back to the notes i am reminded of certain things so uh, you need to take interest if if you find it interesting it's not that you need to take interest and uh, my invitation is please go to the website the tony bujan's website it can uh, give the e learning capsule specifically on the mind map and uh, you can uh, also see some of the beautifully made mind maps and if you find it interesting use yourself couple of times and then you will discover the power of this method and when you yourself discover the power of this method when you yourself are enjoying it then only we can make our students to enjoy this process so uh, and that is my response to uh, this question uh, is the uh, was i did it make sense uh, as clear as possible so one more doubt i am having regarding this so you said to use maximum images where it is possible yes the same example till we uh, now we discuss that missing basics in engineering yes. so this is the topic where we can't find images as uh, possible as uh, now at the right time we cannot make any images then how can we make our mind map more effective in the absence of images also how can we make our mind map so effective so the the very essence of mind mapping is using less words and more pictures uh, it's not that how to make the mind map attractive without using images the the right question is how to make images so uh, are you finding it difficult to make images now if we want to draw it uh, we may not be the best uh, yes. artist to make all yes, this yes 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 so uh, the whole teaching is about challenging your boundary if we have not challenged the boundary then teaching has not happened so if you find it challenging there is all the reasons to do it more if you find it is challenging to find images it is not about finding images it is about thinking about the images it is about creating images so it, this is not the process of finding some images from the google it is process of thinking about images and conceiving images okay. uh, and that's how the creativity will enhance how creativity can be enhanced by only by using it so how a method we master upon only by using it so if you find it challenging that's wonderful it means mind is working 
So, we have to keep finding challenging things because by doing challenging things only <laughs> development can happen and that is the whole essence of uh, education. Means if, if, if education is not challenging then, then that is not education. Thank you sir. Uh, this is Dr. Jog speaking from D.Y. Patil Institute of Engineering and Technology. Good morning, welcome. Yes, sir. Sir, we have made one map. Can I show you that? Yes, you are welcome. Please. So, we have done the various aspects of engineering education. Yes. Like what are the quality assessment methods, pedagogy, teaching learning process, and uh, what are the different ways of uh, teach, uh, teaching the students like workshops, seminar, conferences, conventional teaching, non-conventional teaching. I think it is not uh, visible. So, I have to make the line more thick. That is what is there. Uh, we can see somewhat, uh, though I am unable to read the words, but I can see there are some words. I can see there are uh, uh, more number of, more than one number of colors and uh, there are straight lines, uh, but I can see a lot of stuff there. Uh, and and this is result of how many minutes? Ten minutes? Uh, sir, seven minutes. Seven. Seven minutes. So my invitation is that if you can come up with so many points in seven minutes, if you spend seven more minutes, you can see how many connections can be generated and how many insightful things can come up just by spending seven more minutes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will advise you to uh, scan this mind map and upload it on the Moodle and uh, in fact, I will advise uh, all the uh, centers to uh, make the mind map during this session and at least one center can upload at least one uh, which they consider the best mind map amongst themselves and they can put up on the Moodle on the same thing on the missing points in the engineering educations. Uh, we can have a poll quickly, can you choose one mind map? from each center one mind map on missing points in engineering education and ways to address those. Choice one is yes, choice one is no. So, that is wonderful. Uh, yeah. So, my request is all the centers uh, uh, please make the mind map on the missing points in the management education and ways of addressing those missing points, put it up on the um, Moodle and before we close we need to revise the seven basic principles of mind map and since you all have worked on it, now you can connect to it in a better way. So, I move to the PPT and I quickly. Uh, discuss the scientific uh, principles of mind mapping. So, first thing as I told as I requested start in the center of a blank page turn sideways. Why? Because starting in the center gives the brain a freedom to spread out in all directions. So, I have already explained this. Use image or picture for the center idea. Why? because image is worth a thousand words and help you uh, use your imagination. A central image is more interesting, keeps you focused, help you concentrate and gives your brain more of a buzz. Use colors throughout, uh, because colors are exciting to your brain as are images. Colors add extra vibrancy and life to your mind map, adds tremendous energy to your creative thinking and it is fun. I am sure many of you would have used the color pencils and crayons after a long time. So, third point is connect your main branches to the central image and connect your section, connect your second and third level branches to the first and second level, because our brain works through association. It is like link two, three or four things together. If you connect the branches, you will understand and remember a lot more easily. You must have noticed that you remember that person, uh, the name of that person more whom you can connect in more than one way. When you know about the background, when you know about his college education, or when you know about any other thing which you can connect, you can also remember his name 
and uh, other things. So, actually brain works in the in the ways of association, it associates with one thing with another and if that association is built consciously, we can remember the whole thing with much less effort. Fifth principle is that make your branches curved, because having nothing but a straight line is boring to your brain. So, instead of making a straight line, in engineering we teach make straight lines, but in the mind map we invite people not to make a straight line, because our brain find it boring, our brain find, brain find curved lines more interesting. Use one keyword per line, so because single keyword give our mind map more power and flexibility. So, that also help us to in the abstract thinking, when we are thinking about a concept, when there are uh, we are thinking in terms of paragraphs and phrases, if we have to identify one word actually our brain has to work and our power of abstraction will increase uh, and if we use that one word that will help us to uh, remind the whole thing quickly. Seventh point is use images throughout as many images possible, if you find it challenging is all the reason to do it more often, because image uh, is uh, one image is worth 1000 words. This is the most famous uh, website on mind mapping, you can uh, find videos here, some of the excellent mind maps, you can also find a e-learning package uh, through which you can not only learn mind mapping, you can also learn uh, this how to use the software of mind mapping. Then there are some other resources, uh, this presentation is there with you, so you can always go to the mind manager, concept draw, mind mapper, torcomp, these are mindjet, uh, freemind.sourceforge.net, these are some of the uh, resources for the mind map. So, I will request use these 7 principles and uh, complete your mind map in next uh, 5 to 10 minutes and, uh, and meanwhile we can take few more questions. So, please continue working on the mind map when we are taking the questions and please upload your mind map on the Moodle right after this uh, session or as when convenient during the day. Uh, not a question, I really want to appreciate this kind of mind map. Sir, we have been teaching this mind map for the students for more than 10 years, but today only I came to know we can have images and also branches in this uh, mind map. So, this is uh, really something for me. Uh, and then in like any visual communication, this mind map also helps in the students learning by uh, in three ways, retention, variety and ease in understanding. Yes. That is what I want. Thanks very much. The worth of this method is only in the practice, uh, but the good part is the practicing mind mapping is a fun. So, uh, you, I, I, have, I have shown you in my Facebook group, students are using mind maps uh, to, uh, to recall, to take notes and I have been using it even for the examination. So, in one of the another uh, courses, I use this uh, to test their knowledge, their comprehension and ability and creativity and lateral thinking uh, in the subject. So, thanks very much for sharing this and all the best for your practice. Uh, sir, actually uh, I have a doubt, like yeah. I have heard yeah. term concept map, and, uh, mind maps and lot lot others. Uh, it would be nice if you could differentiate between a mind map and a concept map. Because in my map, we can't see uh, any images or curved lines. Uh, it's, it's, uh, in mind map, it's a more creative process. Uh, so, what what is what are the major differences between a concept map? Where is it used? What and and uh, mind map? The concept map is more precise representation of a phenomena, uh, whereas mind map is not only representation what already is but mind map is an invitation what it can be. So, uh, in the concept map we generally do not use imagination, because that is a reporting of something, means that is a concise representation of a topic, but uh, mind map is not only representation of that topic, but it also uh, represents how it is connected to the other topics, what are the uh, 
creative possibilities in that topic, how it is connected to the distant topic. So, that is the difference between uh, mind map and concept map and that is what make the mind map more creative and more divergent in the, in the process. Whereas, concept map is more of a convergence of a topic, whereas mind map can be uh, very divergent at the same time it can be convergent. So, it works on both ways divergent and convergent, where the concept map is more of a representation of the uh, uh, topic. Sir, in mind map can we, uh, is it that we can add our own thoughts which may not be or beliefs or ideas which may not be, which may not uh, have been proven yet? That is true and uh, that is how science progresses, <laughs> that is how the engineering uh, or research progress. Uh, um, so, we need to clearly uh, mention that that is my idea. So, you can make a picture of your own some brain, some light coming out of it and uh, uh, use uh, that representation to represent your idea, but uh, clearly, uh, clearly specify that that is my idea, that is my possibility and I would like to check further, I would like to uh, uh, connect to some authority or some other, uh, I would like to discuss about it further. So, that is that is the very purpose of uh, mind mapping. I am so excited with your mind mapping. I think uh, every conclusions can be uh, done through my mind mapping, particularly because I feel there are a lot of students who have problem in basic communications. Uh, maybe you know uh, people from vernacular really have a difficult time in communicating in English. Yes. This overrides everything. Amazing. So, thanks very much and uh, all the best for practicing it in your classroom and uh, I hope you and your student find it useful and valuable. Yes, I think this is one of the, we can cross one of the barriers uh, and uh, you know, we can uh, implement this in every conclusion. Uh, this is very, very powerful. Thank you very much for sharing. Thanks very much. And you can also uh, uh, look at on the internet, there are sites about mind map for engineers. So, uh, you can look at in the Google, I was because of the paucity of time, I could not uh, uh, show the material uploaded in the sites which are related to mind mapping for the engineers. So, there are some engineering topics given and uh, beautifully demonstrated how an engineering topic can also be subjected to mind mapping and what are the steps and all that you can all see that is available uh, in the internet and people are working on that. So, uh, it's, it, it is useful for humanities, it is useful for management, it is equally useful for engineering uh, areas and uh, but everything depends on the practice means so how we practice it how often we practice it that will uh, uh, that will be the uh, the basis on uh, that will be the source of the value we draw from this process and from this technique sir we have uh, drawn seven branches which are the points which you have uh, given in the presentation and then as a sub branch we have, we have written the solutions to the, those problems so is it the correct way of uh, mapping uh, the things yeah so this is a correct way and I will invite you to see what are the interconnections between different solutions you have proposed. So, the seven branches are there and their solutions would be there in the mind map. Now, in the solutions you can also connect the solution of one missing value to the another missing value, you can see that connection. That also you can draw because you know these are seven, but source of the problem is is are not seven, they are very few, they are probably one, two or three. So, when we look at the solution and how one solution is also applicable to the uh, another problem, uh, we can see that interconnection and that is the whole fun part of it and out of those solutions you pick up, now you have limited time you have limited resources, students also have limited time and resources and they have to spend time on many other things other than studies. So, uh, when you see the connections of the sources, 
uh, when you see the connection of the solutions, you pick up that solution which addresses largest number of missing points. That can be the starting point of implementing your solution. We color it with the different color or prominent color so that we can say that uh, this sub branches is uh, chosen as a final uh, solution uh, that can be done. That can also be done and uh, that can also be represented in the uh, form of a picture. So, use as much creative uh, faculty as, as possible in this uh, process. Thank you sir, it is very nice uh, to interact with you and learn from you. Thank you. I, I look forward you uploading your mind map on the Moodle. Uh, we can take one or two questions and then I will request uh, some of the centers to show their mind map so that other center members, other centers can also see what kind of work is going on in different centers. Good so, which method will be helpful for prob problematic subject and how can we apply it uh, inside the classroom? Can you show an example? I have already shown an example of the mind map which I have used in my classroom and what the, uh, the output of uh, our students was uploaded on the Facebook group. Uh, this can be used at two points. Uh, it can be used in the introduction part, it can be used in the beginning of the course. You just introduce the topic, you introduce the students uh, the topic and make them aware how that topic is relevant for their academics and how by using that topic, that knowledge, different problems of the world are solved. So, for example, if you are teaching electricity um, or uh, something in the electrochemical thing or if you are teaching them the battery or if you are teaching them the electromagnetics or if you are teaching them the thermodynamics, uh, giving the introduction to the thermodynamics and telling them how this law is applicable in x, y, z situation or x, y, z problems and then ask the students to make the mind map in the beginning uh, so that there is their connection with the subject is established. You can also do the mind mapping. Uh, after completing a topic. So, suppose if you are teaching thermodynamics, you teach all the three laws or four laws and uh, then ask the students to represent those uh, laws in the form of mind map. So, what they will do? They will identify some uh, imaginative picture image uh, and they will put it up in the center uh, and that will provoke them to think the practical application of those laws. And uh, then they will branch out perhaps four uh, different branches will be there for the different laws. Uh, and then they will uh, further make the sub branches of related to each law uh, and how each law is used to solve different type of problems. So, the sub branches will be the different solutions drawn from the same law of thermodynamics and then they can go on keep on making diagrams and then they can also make some pictures about the possibilities what innovations are possible using the those laws and then they can also see a connection uh, how the output or the problem solved through one law is connected to the another law and the interconnections can also be alive and uh, present to them in the process of mind mapping, if I have understood the challenge of teachers of the present time and I, I do not know that might be the challenge for the uh, in the past also, uh, the biggest challenge is making students to think about a problem. Uh, the job of a teacher is half done if we make our student to think and uh, thinking becomes easier not only easier, it becomes fun with this process. So, you can use it uh, after completing the topic and uh, that will make students to think about that topic and that will help them to revise the topic, that will help them to establish their connection with the topic and further thinking and thinking something innovative on that topic. You, you keep on asking uh, think innovatively, what new can be done? they may or may not respond, but if you give them the task, if they are working in the group, they will start motivating, inspiring, questioning each other.
and in that process in a fun way they will start thinking in an innovative way and a different aspect of these things which you want to convey in the class. Uh, thank you. In exam point of view, how it, it will be helpful sir? I have been using it in the exam asking them to make mind map of the subject and uh, uh, I have uh, used three criteria to assess comprehensiveness means how different topics are beautifully covered, uh, insights what are the personal insights students have got and uh, that should be reflected in the mind map and third creativity how creatively all this is presented. So, uh, you can use that in the mind map if not in the final exam you can also use it in the mid term uh, my advice is instead of straight away using it in the final exam you can use this as a internal assessment initially when you or your student become little more familiar to this process then you can use it in the final exam but suddenly for the mid term exam or for some test uh, somewhere in the midway on the uh, in the course or towards the end of the course but before the final exam you can use it as an internal assessment uh, method but before that before using it uh, you must explain to them what is mind mapping you must uh, demonstrate how it is done uh, you must uh, give them the uh, internet links or other resources where they can go and uh, educate themselves about this process. So, first ensure that they are prepared, they are aware, once they are aware and prepared I have, I have seen 95 percent students enjoy this uh, uh, method. Your Our mind map is uh, ready sir. Yeah, could you please show this? Uh, that looks like uh, very close to whatever uh, what we discussed the um, there are branch there are branches sub branches lot of images and uh, though i am not able to uh, read the words but uh, that exactly uh, we discussed so thanks very much and compliments for making this uh, please scan it uh, take a photograph of this, uh, convert that in the PDF, upload it on the Moodle so that uh, other groups can also see this. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank and you. one of my question is that yes. uh, when we are uh, teaching the mathematics, yeah. uh, how the mind map will help, or how to prepare the ma uh, mind maps for the mathematics? In fact, uh, this is the caveat I had to give in the beginning. I have not seen mind map used in mathematics, but I have seen mind maps in, uh, in practical uses of mathematics. So, the those branches of mathematics which have practical uses of some real life problem uh, that is where the mind map can be used. So, on the application side uh, uh, of the mathematics this can be used. Okay, thank you sir, good day. Uh, okay, thanks so much for uh, uh, elaborately explaining us uh, uh, the advantages of using uh, uh, mind maps. Uh, as a matter, we have been using these mind maps in our college, John Money College and Namakal. And uh, I got a question, and you insisted that uh, uh, we have to use the curved lines rather than the straight lines making the points. Uh, the doubt is. Uh, can we add on a square, can we add on a rectangle at the end of the curved line and uh, put the points within the square or rectangle so that it becomes like a finished kind of structure rather than uh, leaving the uh, curved lines bare, will it work sir? Idea is that at, at the end of the line or sub branch uh, the image or picture is most appropriate. Because when we put up a rectangle or circle, these are the familiar uh, figures, means we all are familiar to this. So, our brain is also familiar. So, our brain do not uh, go extra mile, it does not put in little more effort uh, in representing our idea. And we, uh, so uh, rectangles and circles. I have become equal to words and no harm in using words, but then we are uh, 
uh, using less of our capacity of the brain and we are not challenging our brain, we are not challenging our mind to think in a creative way. So, idea of the mind map is that it, it should challenge our students and ourselves to think in a creative manner. So, when it comes to C, C++ and algorithms, how mind map is useful? As I told you about the mathematics, it is useful for the application side. So, what different type of uh, programming is possible in the uh, C++ or uh, how it is applicable? Uh, on the application side, it is more useful on the mathematical and the algorithmic things. Then mind maps are only useful for real time applications, right sir? That is not true, but the highly mathematical subjects, um, I have not seen many mind maps being used for the highly mathematical subjects. But uh, uh, it, for example, thermodynamics. Will you call it uh, application or theory? Of course, it is not as abstract as mathematics or electromagnetism or uh, um, uh, gravitation. These are the topics which are like application as well as mathematics. The mind map works best with these type of topics. Maximum number of images in the mind map sometimes they rep uh, misrepresent the topic. Maximum number of images may disrupt the, the topic. Map. Okay. Uh, uh, initially, yes, but then we have to. Uh, initially, we are not able to find the appropriate, most appropriate image so that convey idea to us. But at times, it is it doesn't convey idea as clearly to others. Uh, so initially, uh, people have to use image as well as word. So image is used and then one or two words are written below the image, uh, so that uh, it is clarified that what this image depicts, what this picture depicts. So, uh, if we use image and if we use words, wor one or two words come uh, attached to each image, then the distraction will be less and whatever uh, person want to convey will be conveyed. Uh, and uh, there will be less distortion of the message. Okay. So, thanks very much for your engagement, for your involvement. Uh, as I told, the, um, the success of this method and utility of this method is in the practice. Uh, enjoy this method to yourself, uh, can uh, give proper uh, resources to your students, so that they can see the potential of it and then only they can enjoy it. And I look forward uh, all the centers uploading at least one or maximum two mind maps on the Moodle uh, on the missing points in the engineering educations. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day.